Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Paul TX14 Walsh here, welcoming you to an all new vehicle review for Armoured Warfare. In today's episode, we shall be reviewing the Scimitar, a Tier 2 armoured fighting vehicle, or AFE, within Shishkin's dealer tech tree. This vehicle was recently introduced as part of the Balance 2.0 update, whereby this vehicle has replaced the M41 Walker Bulldog, which has been moved to the Tier 1 slot in Wofley's dealer tech tree. In this review, we shall be covering a number of topics ranging from the vehicle's historical background to some gold medal gameplay. As a result, if you are not interested in certain aspects of this review, or do not have the time available to watch all of it, please feel free to use the timestamp shown on screen to skip between the different portions of the video. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Background History Known fully as Fighting Vehicle FV107 Scimitar, the Scimitar is an armoured reconnaissance vehicle which is in current use by the British Army. The vehicle was originally developed by the British company Alvis during the course of the 1960s as part of the Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tract CVRT design program. This program produced an entire family of vehicles, including the FV101 Scorpion, the first of the vehicles to be delivered by this program in 1969. The majority of the Scimitar's design was based off of the Scorpion, consisting of a hull made of welded rolled homogeneous aluminium alloy armoured plates, this provided enough protection against small arms fire up to 12.7 mm in calibre. Space for three internal crew members, commander, gunner and driver, and an initial power plant of a single Jaguar J60 4.2 litre petrol engine. This was later swapped in 1988 as part of the CVRT Life Extension program to the Cummins BTA 5.9 litre diesel engine, providing 195 horsepower. The key differences between the Scimitar and its progenitor Scorpion were as follows. The Scimitar was armed with a 30mm L21 Raden cannon, for main armament instead of a 76mm cannon. Interestingly, the Scimitar's turret was the same turret as that used on Alvis's FV721 Fox armoured car design. The Scimitar's mass was also 7.8 tonnes, 0.2 tonnes lighter than the Scorpion, and this, when combined with the change in engine, enabled the Scimitar to reach a top speed in excess of 80 km an hour. The Scimitar has seen combat service in a number of conflicts, including the Falklands Law and the First Gulf War, and the vehicle is still in service to date in both the British Army and the Latvian National Armed Forces. The British Ministry of Defence intends to phase the Scimitar out of service by the close of 2017 with the Scout SV reconnaissance vehicle. Vehicle Loadout Commander We have chosen Sabrina Washington. In general, Sabrina's skill set can be geared towards the AFE class. We shall be utilising two of her skills in particular. The first, Vigilant. This skill boosts our view range by 20 metres. As standard, the view range of the Scimitar is 405 metres. The vehicle shares this value with the other two AFEs available at its tier, the LAV-150 and the OT-65A. This base value is 10 metres short of the 415 metre view range the light tanks at your tier have, such as the T-92LT. By selecting Sabrina, we immediately remove this disadvantage and provide ourselves with a 10 meter view range advantage, as long as our foes are not using commanders with the same skill as well. More importantly, this skill combines well with the recon package trait of the AFV class, whereby a couple of seconds after we have stopped the vehicle, our view range will be increased by 30 meters, taking our view range from 425 meters to 455 meters in total, improving our scouting capabilities considerably. The second skill is Blending In. This improves our camo factor by 10%. For its tier, the Scimitar has the joint top camouflage value of 0.35, sharing this value with the T92LT. Blending In will enhance this advantage even further, boosting our camo value to 0.385. The net result? In a battle contested over open ground, we are likely to be one of the last vehicles to be spotted. If we decide to scout from a stationary position, we can pick positions closer to enemy lines, especially if we can find a suitable bush to hide behind. Or if we decide to be aggressive and push into enemy lines, it is very likely we will light up a large portion of the enemy team for our teammates, as we can push in deeper into enemy lines. A key example of this being shown later on in our featured gameplay. Crew For our driver, I would recommend the following skills. Firstly, off-road driving. This boosts our off-road terrain acceleration by 10%. Whilst our vehicle already has a standard 0-32km an hour acceleration time of 2.62 seconds, we want to ensure we can maintain this performance off-road as best as possible, especially if we overextend into enemy lines and need to make a hasty retreat. 
the skill maximizes our potential to move across the battlefield at will. Our second skill will be Smooth Ride. This improves our on-the-move accuracy by 10%. I shall pick this skill when my driver reaches level 4, as in some circumstances we may not be able to stop to shoot our foes, for example if we are circling the main battle tank, i.e. an MBT. This will allow us to put more accurate shots into our enemies in such circumstances. For our gunner I would recommend the following skills. Firstly shoot from the hip. This improves our minimum accuracy by 10%. This skill complements our decision to eventually pick Smooth Ride for our driver. In a number of circumstances it likely will not have the time, despite our rather short 1.5 seconds aim time as standard, to fully aim in our shots, for example if we are peeking around a corner to take a snapshot or firing on the move. This skill serves to counter our accuracy drop in these scenarios. Our second recommended skill would be Explosive Shells. This boosts our module damage dealt by our shells by 10%. When my gunner reaches level 4, I shall let select this skill. As will be seen in the feature gameplay, we will be throwing a lot of ammunition at our foes. As we have low alpha but high damage per minute, we aim to chip away at our foes health, and any modules we can break during this are a welcome bonus. This may even force our opponents to use their repair kits earlier than they anticipated. Ammo We have both armor piercing fin stabilized discarding Sabo, APFSDS, and high explosive HE available. We have chosen to go with 2 thirds APFSDS and 1 third HE. Our reasoning being that our Sabo has decent penetration, i.e. 150mm, which means we can even get through the frontal weak spots of some main battle tanks such as the M48A3. Meanwhile our high explosive lacks the penetration, i.e. 11mm, to reliably penetrate the majority of our foes, even in their weak spots. The exceptions to this are our AFE competitors especially the LAV-150 with its all round 7mm of armour. However in such instances we need to take note of the lower muzzle velocity of our high explosive, i.e. 950m per second. If we engage an AFE at range and they react by relocating, continuously putting in accurate HE fire will be difficult as we have to provide ample lead. Our Sabo will not suffer from this issue however due to its 1410m per second muzzle velocity. High explosive may prove useful if we encounter an MBT that we are forced to engage frontally, for example on the map river point in the corridor down the 8 line, where we can use our high explosive to chip off some HP and damage modules. On a side note, it is also worth noting that our Sabo rounds do not receive a damage bonus for penetrating over 100mm of armour. Consumables We are taking the standard trio of repair kit, first aid kit and fire extinguisher. Retrofits Whilst we do not currently have any retrofits mounted on the vehicle, I would recommend the following. Improved spool liner in the first slot, as this reduces incoming damage by 5%. Whilst the Scimitar technically has the best armour profile of the three armoured fighting vehicles at its tier, its armour is very weak, i.e. a maximum of 12mm at the front, and is easily penetrable by most shells encountered. For example, if you receive a high explosive anti-tank or a heat round from a T-55, the tier 2 MBT, you will receive 489 HP of damage on average, this is over a quarter of your health pool. This retrofit will serve to reduce the damage you receive, especially from MBTs, and can give you the chance to take one more hit before you perish. In the second slot, augmented optics. This boosts our view range by 25 meters. This retrofit would take the view range of our build up to 450 meters base, generally enhancing our scouting capabilities. And in our final slot, Improved telescopic lenses. This improves our stationary view range by 55 meters. Combining this with augmented optics in slot 2 and the recon package of our vehicle, our view range will be increased to 535 meters. As this exceeds the maximal view range value of 500 meters in game, the excess 35 meters of view range reduces the camouflage values of enemy vehicles by 7%. This will make us a very dangerous stationary scout to contend with. Vehicle stats. Based on our loadout, we have the following vehicle stats. Alpha damage. As mentioned previously, our alpha damage is very low, despite our reasonable penetration on our Sabo rounds. Sustained damage. To make up for our poor alpha, we have the second highest damage per minute or DPM at our tier, falling far short of the 9000 plus DPM of the LAV-150. This is a trade off for having 150mm of penetration versus the LAV's 110mm of penetration on its armour piercing rounds. Our 1.44 second reload time on our 6 round magazine 
combined to our burst fire rate of 210 rounds per minute, or 3.5 rounds per second, means that we can keep pumping out a continuous stream of fire whenever we engage our foes. Defence we sit in the middle ground for armoured fighting vehicle HP at our tier, with 1725 HP in total. Armour wise, as already stated, we have very little armour. 12mm at the front, 10mm at the side, and 8mm at the rear. This makes us vulnerable to almost all ammunition types, and mean that heat and high explosive rounds are very likely to receive damage bonuses when instant on our armour. Combining these two attributes together, we realise that whilst we have enough HP to take a couple of hits, our health will not hold up very long in a sustained firefight. We need to use our camouflage and mobility to circumvent this. Mobility Whilst we are the slowest of the FEs at our tier by a significant margin, i.e. our 84.24km an hour versus the 99.72km an hour of the LAV-150, we are still a very fast vehicle for a tracked vehicle. Unlike the other FEs as well, we can turn on the spot due to our tracks, this gives us an advantage when we are hiding behind a small piece of cover and need to change our vehicle's orientation. The disadvantage of being tracked, however, is that we can become tracked in a position by our opponents, unlike wheeled AFEs which can keep moving at a reduced speed. Our acceleration is strong, i.e. from 0 to 32km an hour in 2.62 seconds, and our hull traverse of 45.37 degrees per second means that we can compete with the fastest turning light tanks at our tier, i.e. the T92LT. However, wherever possible, we should avoid ramming opponents due to our 7,076kg mass. The only thing lighter than us for our tier is the OT-65A. Utility As already discussed, the vehicle lends itself very well to the scouting role. We are stationary on the move with a 425m view range and 0.385 camouflage value. Targeting Thanks to our 10 degrees of frontal gun depression and 8 degrees at the rear, this vehicle will do well in fights staged over uneven terrain. This allows you to utilise ridgelines more effectively than some of the MBTs such as the T-55 and light tanks such as the Type 69 that you should be facing. Your 35 degrees of gun elevation is the best at the tier, meaning you can fight from a downslope position without issue. As for your maximum deviation, you must keep in mind that this value applies for each shot you fully aim in. As you're about to see, Firing each shell within your clip as soon as it is loaded comes with a significant accuracy penalty at medium to long range, i.e. 150 meters plus. Our first clip is on a target at 100 meters. As we can see, the accuracy penalty does not have too much of an effect at shorter ranges. Now, moving our target out to 200 meters and doing the same. Here, only 4 of our 6 shells actually hit and penetrated the target. If you are going to engage a fire at longer ranges then, you need to either take a little bit more time in aiming each shot, or try to catch your fire in a position where they present the largest possible profile for you to shoot at. Still, if we do decide to aim in each shot, our 1.39 second aim time is not too punishing, especially seeing as we have the fastest aim time at our tier by a large margin. Combining this with the fact that our turret traverse is also the best for our tier, and we find that we have a vehicle that can very quickly switch between and reacquire targets mid-clip if needs be. So now that we have completed our analysis of the Scimitar's loadout, let's take a look at some golden gameplay. Today's gameplay takes place on the standard version of the map pipelines, whereby as we can see from the team sheets, matchmaking has not been very kind, and we're in a tier 4 game with a large number of tier 4s, 6 per side. But this is a motivator, not adversity. We spawn in on the northern side of the map, and our overall game plan will be to contest the hill in locations Echo 5, Foxtrot 5. If we can take that hill we can provide view range for the entirety of our team, rather than just a group who went down the eastern side or the western side. If you go east you normally go there to contest the refinery, if you go west you go play in the hills. But by staying down the centre we can maximise our spotting potential. Now in order to get there we're going to go via Delta 7 because there's a small hill location up there we can use to provide us with a little bit of safety and gauge what our teammates are doing. As we make our way there we're going to talk about one feature we haven't discussed on the Skimitar yet and that is its smoke grenade launches, whereby it can fire off 8 smokes in total and has a 2 shot clip for them. 6 second reload between smokes in the clip and then an 80 second reload to reload the entirety of the clip before going again. 
Your smoke can be used as a great safety measure, i.e. defense, alternatively as a great offensive measure for pushing forward over open terrain. We're going to see both roles here. Now having perched up in our safety spot, we note a friendly LAV 300 trying to contest the hill. As they make their way forward, they're going to bump into some resistance, and we will move forward to support them. However, as we make our way down the hill, the enemy resistance surges over the summit in the form of a T-92LT that spots us as we throw up our smoke in an offensive manner in order to become unspotted briefly and continue to push forward through our smoke into a position at the base of the summit. Logic being that may have encouraged the T-92 to pull back and they cannot be certain exactly what we were doing as we cut their observational status of us in half. Looking off to our left hand side into the southeastern corner of the map we can see a number of enemy MBTs, at least two of the tier 4s there. So we know that the enemy MBTs are taking the standard role of brawling it out on the eastern flank. And we also know that because the enemy vehicles, the T-62 and the T-92 are up on the summit, and our teammates are trying to contest them around the summit, nobody's on the eastern riverbank, and we can push down there and use our mobility to great effect. As we make our way round, gingerly at first to make sure we don't overextend into enemy guns, we notice that the region is empty and we begin to occupy it. And pushing forward, we come round on the side of a T-92, spotting them for our teammates. We put in one clip, as we put in the second clip, a friendly T-69 finishes them off. Sorry, Type 69. And we take a hit to our tracks here. Now fortunately we're behind cover, but this goes to show a weakness of being a tracked vehicle. You can be tracked in position. And as the aggressor fires another shot and it goes into the landmass, we point out to our team on the minimap, there's something at Foxtrot Zero you may want to investigate. But for now as we peek around the corner, we notice a Leopard 1 and an LAV 300 on the enemy team sitting right at the back. And we dump in two clips into the LAV 300, our accuracy being very kind here, doing just over 500 damage. But we can see how our shells were scattering at the longer distance, and why shooting at distance can be a mixed result. Identified. Now respotting here, we respot the Leopard 1 shortly, and we also have the T92LT who pushes too far forward. They overextend, and we can put in multiple clips as they get out the way of our incoming fire, and that's our teammates. And remember, we were spotting the T92 for our team. With the enemy Leopard 1 retreating from their hill spot south of us, we decide in a second it's time to push forward as our teammates are coming forward on the minimap and we always want to be one step ahead of our team, or at least in the location we're contesting, so therefore we can be the one to spot for our teammates. And it looks as though our team on the western side of the map have found whatever was shooting at us earlier, or at least one of the aggressors, which is good news. So we get ready to move forward, gingerly at first, once again we're cautious, and then we start to really push the hammer down. We spot two enemy vehicles, the T-92, and also what appears to be some sort of MBT. We'll come on to the MBT shortly. Here's a Type 69, and we can only shoot at the top of their turret. We're never getting through due to its curvature and thickness. But the T92 here decides to push out on us, and whilst they do have quite high alpha compared to our own, they do not have the DPM that we possess, meaning that we can do as much damage with our clip as they can do with a single shot. And we decide to play cautiously there simply because the enemy team may have been looking at us from the side, and they were, whereby we take a nasty hit from the enemy chieftain. Whilst we were being spotted, we decide to throw up our smoke, and the enemy team misses the result by the looks of things as we become unspotted. There goes to show the defensive nature of our smokes. As we peek over once again, we are spotting every so often the enemy Leopard 1 by the looks of things, and also the Type 59 2A. We sit in this position for the time being and continue to spot the enemy team, and then we're spotted. I'm not sure what by, perhaps that enemy LAV 300, as we try to peek around on them, and our teammates finish them off. Whether for our spot or someone else's, we cannot be sure. As we continue to look around the corner, we decide, right, it's time to push around behind that Type 69. We can get into the rear of their vehicle and rip them apart. And here we go of our close range DPM. We're going to shred this MBG. One clip, two clips, and that's another kill. We continue to push forward here, and we know that our teammates have secured the western side of the map, albeit there's one enemy vehicle located deep in the western flank. Not too worried about that. We start to peek over the hills once again, looking eastwards, and we spot the enemy's MBTs. Well, as we fire, we get spotted by the enemy T-72, and we should point out that our camo index drops rapidly when we start firing, so it's not always advisable to just open fire as soon as you spot something. But here we want to help secure the kill on the enemy Leopard 1, so 
we dump in one clip, dump in a second, that's kill number three. As we look over at the enemy MVTs, we can see the Chieftain Mark II. But it looks as though the enemy team is collapsing as it's 12 to 4, and we decide to just push around behind the MVT 72 at this point. Using our smoke at first to become unspotted, we've still got another smoke available. And really, we're just harassing this enemy T72. We want them to look at us rather than our teammates, because that T72 has a very high amount of alpha on their 125mm cannon. And anything we can do to have that point at us rather than our teammates is going to help us all out. So here we've thrown some more shots into their exposed side, doing a small amount of damage, but really getting them to turn. We're probably really peeing off that T72 player at the moment, and we'll continue to do that for as long as possible. Though here we're going to use our mobility in terms of our top speed in order to get a little bit closer to the T72 as we push along the hillside. We will get spotted and we'll also use our smoke to dissuade their aim slightly as we get respotted and use our mobility to dodge their incoming fire. And the T72 also went to exhaust smoke as well. But now that they're stuck between multiple aggressors, they point to us briefly once again as we keep harassing their side, and then they're going to turn 180 degrees towards some of our teammates on our health. But at this point, thanks to the T-72 giving us the rear of their vehicle, we knock out their left-hand set of tracks, and then we dump as many rounds as possible into their engine deck. But notice here, because we're firing our guns so rapidly at maximum fire rate, we are missing some shots, alternatively hitting into the flat portion of their rear engine section. And as a result, that means our rounds are bouncing off of the rear of their vehicle. We get the kill in the end, our fourth kill, and wouldn't it be lovely if we could pick up a fifth kill in the remaining Type 59 and make this an ace tanker gameplay as well. So we use our mobility to push through the hills on the western side of the map, briefly getting stuck on a rock, my mistake. As we continue to press forward here, we come around on the side of a very weak Type 59 who doesn't seem to spot us. And we continue to flank round, they won't be able to turn their armour to face us, we only need a couple of shots, and it's game over. Victory in the bag, let's take a look at the post-game stats. A rather intense match, we can see that we received 6,023 reputation and 53,530 credits. We also received the following awards for our efforts. Master Gunner for hitting at least 80% out of 10 or more shots fired, where these shots must total a potential damage of at least 1,000 HP. Ace Tanker for destroying the most vehicles on our team, where we destroyed 5 or more, in this instance exactly 5. Gold Medal for earning the highest reputation on the winning team. And Recon for detecting the most enemy vehicles on our team, where we must spot at least 7 enemies. As for our 3 major contributions, we dealt 4,720 HP of damage, we assisted with 2,495 HP of spotting damage, and we spotted 9 enemy vehicles in total. Looking at the teams, we can see that we topped both teams in terms of damage dealt. As for our gold medal, we did not top our team by reputation earned by a major margin, but by a relatively minor one. This goes to show how we did not carry our team, but instead combined our vehicle's utility and mobility attributes to get us into the right positions to either spot the enemy or deal out damage using our impressive damage per minute, hence why we took the central route through the map. As for our detailed report, we have two items to note. Firstly, that over three quarters of the damage we dealt was at ranges shorter than 150 meters. This serves to highlight how the 30mm cannon gains potency as the scimitar closes the distance on its foes. The second item is that we received 4 hits in total, totalling just over 50% of our health pool. We did not mitigate any damage whatsoever, thereby showing how lightly armoured the scimitar is and how vulnerable it is as a result. Conclusion In conclusion, the scimitar makes for a very potent AFV at its tier. By comparison with the other AFVs available, it sets itself apart with the following strengths. Target Acquisition with both the best aim time and turret traverse at its tier, this vehicle can switch between targets on the fly. What's more, as it is a tracked AFE, it can rotate on the spot. This is unlike the other two AFEs available at tier 2, and enables the scimitar to always be pointing in the right direction for the next engagement. Secondly, spotter potential. With a joint highest camouflage value at its tier, and an appropriate reconnaissance build, the scimitar will be able to outspot enemy AVs even with ease especially from a forward position. And thirdly, close range damage per minute potential. If allowed to get close, the Scimitar's 30mm cannon can rapidly sap away at the health of even the healthiest MBTs thanks to its DPM. However, unlike all other vehicles, it does not come without its weaknesses. Firstly, minimal armour. 
As this is to be expected from the AFE class, the Scimitar has 12mm of armour at most. This means that it is highly likely to receive maximum damage from heat or high explosive shells. Secondly, poor damage potential at range. Unless you fire the 30mm cannon's 6 round clip in single shots, you will receive a large accuracy penalty at longer ranges, leading to lots of shots bouncing or missing completely. And finally, poor alpha. With only an average of 45 HP of damage per shell, and no bonus damage or penetrations on its Sabo rounds, the Scimitar relies on being able to fire off multiple clips in engagements in order to deliver damage. You need to plan out engagements therefore to achieve maximal time on target. Therefore if I had to sum up the Scimitar in a single word or phrase, it would be Aggressive Recon. This armoured fighting vehicle can pick its engagements with ease and, when the time is right, go all in to unleash the ferocity of its 30mm cannon. And with that, that is the end of our review. Thank you for watching, I have been TX141, and if you have enjoyed the video be sure to let me know by leaving a like, comment, or why not even subscribe for more Armoured Warfare content on my channel. But until next time ladies and gentlemen, take care, and see you on the battlefield.